Understand disruption is part of the game and your job is to be highly unique and valuable and you don't have to be unique and valuable to everyone. Your job is to create a monopoly in the minds of the highest talent people you can possibly find. So the question is this, how do most agents find the secrets to succeed in today's competitive real estate market, especially when the top agents are keeping those secrets to themselves? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Amuchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui for a quick commercial break, but I think you guys are gonna think this is super cool. I recently got to interview Pavan Agarwal. He is the founder and CEO of SunWest Mortgage Company, and they have this really cool thing I wanna share with you called Morgan. After years of development, SunWest Mortgage Company, a national leader in mortgage origination and servicing, has launched the newest iteration of proprietary AI platform, Morgan. SunWest's novel application of open ledger technology is groundbreaking and will redefine how real estate sales are transacted. I got to ask him all about this in our interview and the technology is so neat. You don't have to be doing loans with SunWest Mortgage for it to be of value to you. But listen to this, AI technology converts a pre-approved property specific loan to a property agnostic tradable token, like an NFT. I'm still learning about NFTs and he explained it to me in the meeting, how this is going to work and how once they approve something, other, you only have to get approved once. Other lenders can then bid to do the loan for you after that quick approval. This approach not only opens buyers and sellers to wider opportunities, but empowers all income bracket borrowers with the ability to present offers with certainty without open-ended financing contingencies. Thus, the borrower is now armed with the strength of an all-cash offer that sellers prefer. 99% of thousands of loan conditions SunWest received daily were received within two hours, and over 30% of those were reviewed within only 30 minutes. So whether you need an updated pre-approval at 10 p.m. on a Sunday or instant feedback on guidelines, Morgan is free and available 24 hours a day to cater to your mortgage needs. You wanna try this thing out? Go to usemorgan.com. I asked him about this during the interview. I started using it and started playing around with it. You just go to usemorgan.com and you start having a conversation. Whether you're asking about getting your buyer pre-approved, whether you have a question about a, a buyer that just bought a car and if they're still going to be approved now or how that might change. These guys are doing some really, really cool things in the business. They said in the next six months, they're going to start to get approvals down to within just minutes, like full lender approvals within just minutes using this AI tool, not talking to a person, but like texting things back and forth and working it out. So go check out this new technology, usemorgan.com. Hey, your real estate rock star, Stephanie Brackett here coming at you on this beautiful day. Um, it's Friday right now when we're recording this. I have no idea what day it's going to air. It could be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. But if it's a Friday, happy Friday. It'll feel I, like Friday. <laughs> we'll, we'll pretend it's Friday because that's the best day. So I am here today with Patrick Kilner. And Patrick, I would love for you to introduce yourself and just give a brief introduction because you've been in this business for a long time. Way too long. I just have to look in the mirror. That's the problem with Zoom. <laughs> you get to look at how old you are. Um, yeah, 18 years, almost 19 years now in the business um, and uh, have seen my my shifts in the marketplace. Um, cut my teeth in, in the in the DC metro area. Um, built a team, built a brokerage, um, folded that brokerage into a larger brokerage, uh, you know, so have had a lot of fun in this business, seen a lot of, of different pitches of the marketplace. Um, my team has, uh, really six producing agents right now. Um, I've built it so that if I get hit by a bus, they can continue working and taking care, taking care of their families. Um, so, you know, sort of. In, in the lexicon of, of those at KW, sort of that seventh level. Uh, what I, I, I'm really, uh, in the last few years have really re-entered the business to really continue to accelerate that team's growth and, and invest myself into those folks. Um, and wrote a book in the process called Find Your Six to help them go out and build disruption proof businesses. Um, and that's, uh, so that's a little about me. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me a little background about, um, your current team. Like what are units? What does that look like? What's your current average sales price in your marketplace? What? Yeah. yeah. yeah so we're right. on pace this year. We're going to do about 175, 180, uh, units this year. Our average sales price, um, is right around, around 900,000, which is 
just fantastic. And yeah, you know, obviously in the last couple of years, we've gotten a, an extra bump because of this marketplace. Yeah. Which is Do you remember nice. what it was around when you started? Do you remember what that average sales? Price yeah, was? it was about four ten. Wow. So more yeah. than double. Now, yeah, and part of that is also me moving into higher end stuff. Okay. So Which you know that naturally with a lot of agents, you yeah, absolutely. So you you hang out for eighteen years, and all your friends are buying more expensive houses, and <laughs> um, and, and and people move up, and it's a, it's a fantastic thing. And I got into this when I was twenty five. Okay. So um, so you know that's that's a different world than you know somebody in their forties now. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me, uh, as far as your team goes, what is your favorite? Like, what what are you most excited about where your team's going right now? Yeah. So, um, uh, gosh, I haven't told anybody this, but uh, <laughs> you guys were but I guess I'm going to tell a bunch of people now. <laughs> um, we're actually developing a tech that enables us to begin the client conversation where we are, we're actually building books of business for agents. We're, we're sitting at the same table with their financial advisor, their CPA, and, and the tech we're developing is, is going to help our agents reposition themselves. So just instead of our agents looking for the next deal with people, we're consulting them on a, on a lifelong real estate plan so they can build wealth through real estate. I'm really excited about that. It's been something I've been working on for the last few years, and I've been training my team on this for the last uh, two or three months now, and we're about ready to launch it. So I'm really excited about that. And That's amazing. And you get to a point where you know you just know you have the people who can implement. You just have to give them the tools to do it. So this has been something I've been you know really just super excited about for the last couple of years. And so, yeah, now everybody knows that that's what we're Well, there doing. we go. That's yeah. awesome. And, and you know, I find it super interesting that so many people in the real estate world that sell real estate for a living do not also invest in real estate. It's shocking. Totally. The biggest whiff that you can make as an agent is to not see the immense opportunity of building wealth. You know, I, I was I was rereading Rich Dad Poor Dad with my 17 year old. Uh, you know, we we take runs in the morning. I had it in my earbuds, and, and we're running. And and uh, <laughs> he turns to me. He goes, "Dad, uh, do you think I could buy an investment property? I know I'm not 18 yet, but like, would that be all right if I if I did that before I went to college?" I was like, "Yes, you got yes. it." Because he's like, <laughs> "If I'm understanding this correctly, good debt is debt that somebody else pays for." I'm like, a hundred and ten percent. Okay, if I if I understood this at, at seventeen, <laughs> it would have been game over. So, and a lot of people just don't understand that. And yeah. and the the awesome power of leveraging mortgage debt the way that we can is historically unprecedented, and that we can do that, and and that you as an agent are sitting with a treasure trove of opportunities in front of you that most people just don't realize they have or, or, or don't have would access. love to get, don't have access to. So um, that is one of the biggest opportunities as real estate agent. As much as I've spent time building my practice, the thing that will provide for my kids generationally is definitely going to be much more the investments into real estate. A hundred percent. I know that the agent that I, I worked for before um, this new current job that I'm in, we, we did have the Fannie Mae contract. We had the Fannie Mae contract 2011, 10, 11, 12, 13. And just the deals that were coming across his desk, I just said to him like four months ago, we should have bought all of these. <laughs> <laughs> we would have so much money right now. We should have bought all of these. Like right, it's just right. the mindset wasn't there though. It was like turning and burning. We're just selling these things fast. Yeah, we're it's just, all commission based mindset. And, yep. and that's fine. Look, we're, we're really blessed to be able to make a ton of money when we sell a house. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, I think we're in a battle to be worth that, you yes. know, because tech is coming in and saying, well, actually most agents aren't actually not worth that and they're going to disrupt it. And so you got to be worth every penny and more when you step in the door and, and list and sell properties. Now to your point though, gosh, if you, if you're not looking for opportunities to get in on investments, even if it's not all your own money, you know, you're, you're just getting in on deals and, and you have people who trust you and you can put some skin in the game, start, yep. start making money as a, as a partner in, in some of these things. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you mentioned the word disruption, which I love because that's what I want to talk about next because that's kind of your forte, right? How do we disruption proof our business? Because 
everybody knows right now, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a market in the country that's not feeling the shift. Absolutely. I mean, and some worse than others, but they're sure. all. <clears throat> yeah, we, we're definitely, it's, it's coming up on us. And, you know, you and I remember the days we, you know, 08, 09, we went from, you know, 1.5 million people in NAR, which by the way, we're right back up to that now. Yeah. To 750,000 or so people in NAR uh, in the course of 18 months to two years. Yeah, it's almost and, like you shut your eyes and half the half of them are gone. And, and, and it was a lot of people taking early retirement, right? Hey, it's yeah. time to fold. And, and there was a lot of people who were newer who just couldn't make it through. And, and it had been an insanely frothy market. Anybody could sell a house. It was not, it was not a professional's market. It was, it was an easy to, to sell in market. So it made everybody look like a total superstar. If you got in during those, those years, I got in oh four, five, six, and it felt like, wow, you know, I'm going to be able to do this. And then disruption hit. And I remember looking around and watching people who I really respected who'd been in the, in the marketplace for 20 plus years and they were, they were just getting crushed. Closing up shop. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, disruption has been, look, and if you're in business long enough, disruption is going to come. It's just part of the reality of, of, of a free market, frankly. And we're really fortunate to have that. And, um, you know, and because it allows us as agents to do what we do and to innovate. And the question that I am, I'm always asking agents are, are you innovating faster than the next disruption? Di disruption happens either because of someone else's innovation that's coming for you. It's a competitor, it's tech, or it's a disruption like what I think we're going to be encountering here, you know, with really high inflation for who knows how long with really high rates that are that are really taking an entire generation and putting them on, on the sidelines, you yeah. know, millennials, we saw the, the pent up millennial demand that burst onto the scene at the beginning of COVID. And, and that has, that has all of a sudden been put on the sidelines. I don't think they're all gone. It's a generation that still needs to buy houses. Right. But I do think that if rates stay high, you know, it's just going to be, um, it's going to be slim pickings when it comes to, to demand. Yeah. And it's funny because they, they've been raised, you know, that, that generation, they've been raised in their parents' houses who grew mm -hmm. up in a very wealthy generation mm -hmm. and they want a nice house. And so, to, so to now tell them, I know what you could afford last year looked like this, but right. what you can afford this year with interest rates now looked like this. They're like, yep. Oh, that's really yeah. a tough pill for me to swallow. Yeah. And I don't know about you and your market, but we saw more generational transfer of wealth from boomers to millennials than I, than I'd seen in 18 years combined. Yes, 100%. And, and now your stock portfolio where you, you, you were pulling those funds from is not doing nearly as well. And right. so, you know, are we, are we entering a shift? Absolutely. Is it based on demand going down a hundred percent? Um, I think that's a very resilient demand. And I think this will pop back faster. You know, the big difference between now and 2008, we have this discussion a lot on, on my team, is that there was a ton of artifice in what pushed up the market prior. Yeah. That's not happening here. I, we're, we were giving A plus, B plus people funds to go buy houses. They're not going to get foreclosed on, in particular right. in, in metro areas like like the one that I'm in. So we're not going to see the foreclosures. We're not going to see the short sales nearly to the same degree. But I think we are going to see a softening of 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 prices because that's just what happens when demand drops as severely when as When demand drops, yep. And we've seen, I mean, we've seen those days on market start to creep up. I mean, back mm -hmm. in the day, I know 2011, 12, 13, we were like average days on market here, 130, 140 days. Agents that got in the business in the last two years are like, what are you talking about? Like, there's no way it took that long to sell a house. It absolutely yeah. took that. What's a price change? What do you mean by a price change? Like, yeah, we had to actually lower the price on houses. <laughs> I remember taking like year plus long listing agreements. That was just standard. Oh, yeah. 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 So and 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 what we need to understand is real estate is not exempt from disruption. We often think, you know, there's all these disruption factors that that happen in different industries. Happens all the time. Um, I watched a show on Elon Musk 
yesterday. It was a documentary on Elon Musk, and he was an industry disruptor. He disrupted many different industries. He disrupted the banking industry with PayPal. He -hmm. disrupted the electric car industry with Tesla. And then, of course, he disrupted the space industry with with SpaceX. So there's good. It it doesn't matter what I'm sure all the big banks when PayPal came out thought no one's going to touch us. We're big banks. We hold all the money. We hold all the cards. And then, boom, this guy comes in with this PayPal thing and disrupts right. the industry. So as you're talking about disruption, how do you start to disruption proof a real estate business? What does that look like? Yeah, I think you, you really have to begin asking yourself, first of all, what do I do that someone else can easily replicate? Because if there are things in your in your list of things that you think are unique and cause you to have revenue coming in, but that someone else can easily repeat because they can outspend you or because they can do it for cheaper, right? So if AI can do it and if it can be outsourced, those are sort of the first two things. And let's just look at the, at the, the business development side of things, the revenue generating side of, of your business, because you don't drive, drive revenue. You're not driving contracts, for example, then then you don't have a business. So right. what is it about the way in which you bring deals in that could make you disruption proof? And what is it about that same thing that makes you very disruption prone? And and what's really interesting, and, and as I was researching for the book, I found just absolutely fascinating. I remember having a conversation with some agents and I was we were talking about, you know, the same idea. Hey, it was a half, halfway through the year. You had revenue goals. Here you are. It's, you know, middle of the summer. Okay. Maybe you were a little optimistic. <laughs> what do you have in your back pocket in terms of your lead generation strategy? Like we could, we could talk about knocking doors and pounding phones and memorizing scripts and, and, and sending stuff to people's houses and, you know, pop buys and all this stuff, right? All of these things. How many of you, so what, what is it that you're going to bridge the gap in your revenue with? So what are you going to go and just go hard on? And they all wrote that down. And I remember saying, okay, well, great. Now that you've written that down, how many of you are really, really excited about doing that activity for the next three to five years? Five days a week, two hours a day. How many of you are deeply excited about that? 40 people, not a hand was raised. Of course. I thought, Okay, there's something wrong with the way in which we're thinking about lead yeah. generation, if that's the case. And I was just, it, it sort of struck me. So I was really looking like, this is a business productivity conversation, right? Yeah. And I didn't have any, any, any food, you know, to, for, for thought for the rest of the audience. And I thought, okay, well, I'm just curious for those of you who have kids, I'm a dad. How many of you would take that same lead generation thing that you wrote down and teach it to your kids so they can have a much more deeply fulfilling life and career? And of course, nobody raised their hands. I thought, well, gosh, if we're doing disruption prone things and we wouldn't even teach it to our kids, then what is it that we should be doing such that five, 10 years from now, we're even more excited to do it and we would transfer it to the next generation of people who would take over our businesses? Because that's why I'm in business. And and it got me thinking deeply about what what is not disruption prone. And, and just thinking about my own career, the only things that have remained constant are the relationships that I've curated. And many of them have been B2B relationships, honestly, on the, on the real estate side. And I talk to people about this book. It's not just a real estate book, but I talk to people in all sorts of industries. But when I talk to real estate agents, I really encourage them to think in a B2B fashion versus a B2C. And most lead gen is about trying to convince a person to work with you today. Right. And, and people feel like they're commodities when you do that. The other type of, and I don't even call it lead gen, the business development that I, that has really allowed me to continue to grow my team and transfer, um, transfer wealth to, to new people coming into, to my team in terms of the, the investment into their, into their growth has been investing into a handful of really, really important relationships. Um, and so th- that's where the research for the book really came in. I started talking to people who had had the most amazing careers I could possibly find. And I-, I interviewed about 60 of them. And what I found is that 
the average number of pivotal relationships they'd had in their career that that allowed them to avoid all sorts of disruption was just six relationships. Wow. And I was like, whoa, that's just, it, it was it's yeah. super impactful. And so what if we shifted from, I need to pound the phones and talk to 100 pre- people a day to my job is to be in the talent game. My job is to go find the six major accounts that are going to send me a ton of business what would I, what would my day look like? What would the structure of my day look like in order to do that? How long would it take me to go find those people? Would it take me an entire career if I had a system that I could plug myself into and do every single day? And what I found is you can go find your six people in six months to a year. Um, and, and that's been my journey. I, I, I've, I've lived it and have taught other people to do it. So that's my, my biggest, um, advice to people is get in the talent game. You know, we oftentimes think about talent internally, right? Here's, I'm looking for people internally and I got to find people in order to find leverage and grow my, grow my influence internally. But what I would propose to people is your first job and your always job, regardless of where you are in your growth towards a a, a really big team, if that's what you want to build, is to be in the talent business. And the, what we know internally is when we, when we are hiring people out of pain, we never have the same ROI on those, on that human capital. When we have an abundance of talent, because we're in the game of looking for great talent and we're building a bench of that talent, it changes everything internally and the same as external. So this book is really about finding external talent that you can build your business through. And that's going to change depending on the market that you're in. Um, but that's sort of, you know, the, the biggest mindset shift is being in the talent game. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about real estate and real estate, you can run a transactional business or you can run a relationship business, right? You, you can actually do both, but the transactional business is so much harder to do because mm-hmm. you're rebuilding a relationship with every new person that comes in. There's not that trust that's already there. There's not right. that, Oh, Hey, you got to use this person because they're awesome. It's like, crap. Now I've got to be like, Hey, I'm your person. I'm really good at what I do. I'm going to take care of you. You're trying to rebuild your reputation with every new person that comes in the door. But if you run a relational business where the same, your six are sending you all the business, you know that they're selling you before that person ever gets to you. They're sending you people. They're like, you got to use Pat. Like he's, he's the only real estate guy in the world. I trust you have to use Pat. Yeah. And Peter Thiel talks about this in zero to one. He talks about having a monopoly on on the market, right? And that's actually your, your job is to be, you're in the monopoly business and you don't have to monopolize everybody. But if you not monopolize, if you're the only name in real estate in the right people's minds, then oh. it's game over. Now, what's interesting is we come at this in real estate, you know, people come in and I remember being a brand new agent and my broker saying, okay, you just got married. You got a list of 250 people. Came to your Half wedding. Them related to you at my wedding, right? Like, you know, <laughs> like seriously, we're yeah. just from big families. And, um, and, and, you know, that's your list. That, that those are the people who are going to buy from you. And I thought, well, the problem is all those people know I'm brand new in the business <laughs> and they all know 10 other real estate agents. Right. So like, I, um, okay, I'll, I'll start because I didn't have a better place to start. Um, and I remember walking into people's houses who knew me. Who f- and and feeling like they were doing me a favor, and that felt that was like I don't think that this is how it's supposed to feel. I want to be so good at what I do that they hire me because I'm lights out for them. I'm the best possible person that they could hire, and I certainly didn't feel that way for a number of years in the real yeah. estate business. And um and so you know how do you go and build a business from scratch, knowing that you're new? And who do you go, go hang out with? And so this is something I think we all grapple with. And, and, and as you're beginning to still feel valid in the marketplace as an agent. Um, so that's, you know, I don't know if that, that answers your question, but that, that I think is, is really so important to, to understand is that your job is to be like, let's, let's go find these people. Um, uh, for me, uh, and I'll just sort of give, give some ideas of maybe, people that you might want to go, you'll find. 
I have found um, people who are deeply trusted and to get paid a lot for being trusted are really, really high on my pyramid of people, right? So the problem is everybody that you know, all those people in the, in the wedding list, they are the great majority of them show up to work and it's kind of like Fred Flintstone, like they're working for the weekend, you know, when, it, when, when the bell rings at the end of the day, proverbially yeah, or actually, <laughs> it's like, I'm done, I'm out of here. Yeah. And they're, they're, they have a very transactional relationship with their clients and with their, and their employer. And that's fine. Um, but they're not the people who make a lot of money because they transact themselves as a result of the trust that they build in the marketplace at a super high level. Right. You also have people sort of in the middle of the pyramid, if you, if you think of it sort of as a you know, huge base and, and smaller at the top, who it's a nice thing if, if like my home inspector, it's a bonus to him. If I like him, I'll give him a few more deals that year, but it's not going to make or break his year. Um, a lot of my lenders are like that as well. Um, a lot of my title relationships are like that. It's a bonus, but it's not changing the trajectory of their of their careers massively. But there's people who, unless they're trusted implicitly, will be out of business tomorrow. Right. And, and so, you know, we've got a ton of business from financial advisors over the years. We've got a ton of business from developers and builders, amazingly. Um, we've gotten, or perhaps not amazingly, I'm sure, you know, you've seen that uh, all over the place. Um, why? Because they spend a ton of time with people. It's the trust that people have to have in them is super deep and trust is transferable. So when they decide that they're going to recommend us, it's game over. Totally. And you don't need that many people who are at the top of that pyramid for you in order to do a whole lot of business. And the problem that I saw in real estate is everybody's trying to go focus on the bottom part of the pyramid. And it's a, it's exhausting. And it's and that's why people didn't raise their hand and say, yeah, I want to keep doing that for the next three to five yeah. years. Door knock every day. Go knock every on single day. doors and get told no over and over and over again, right? Yeah. Like, that's what's happening is you're just getting told no constantly instead right. of getting a name from someone who says, Hey, you got to call Pat. He's your guy. They call you and they're like, you're my guide. Let's go. You don't, you're not even having to convince them. They've been convinced before you ever pick up the phone to call them. Absolutely. And you show up and your lights out and guess what? Those people call back the person that referred you and go tremendous. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's the type of business that I want to be in. And, and I just, I think in real estate, we think that's the slow route. Like the relational is the slow route. I found it to absolutely not be the slow route. Well, it exponentially happens so much faster. Oh, it's tremendous. Because human relationships annuitize. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Muchastegui, and I'm interrupting myself to bring you this commercial break from one of our sponsors. There's somebody I've been looking at for a long time, and when they reached out to me, I said, yes, we have to be able to do this deal. So that sponsor is Follow Up Boss. There's a lot of superstars out there that use Follow Up Boss. What's your favorite CRM? We're using Follow Up Boss. So we use Follow Up Boss. So we use Follow Up Boss. I love Follow Up Boss. I love it. We have action plans now for bringing on new agents. We have action plans for our recruiting. Uh, we call them action plans and follow up boss, which will trigger tasks for the agents to do as far as calling. Follow up boss, I like more for the integrations with everything, MailChimp, call action, all those different products. I will say we used Sync and we switched from Sync to follow up boss. Honestly, the greatest CRM I've ever used, I've used Rivety Sync. I've looked at Boomtown, like Real Geeks, just a bunch of different ones. But me personally, I fell in love with Fub about like seven months ago when I first started using it. I've used Boomtown. I've used Line Desk. I've used Conversion. And I think Follow Up Boss gives you the most integrations mm -hmm. that are simple. And it gives you the best ability to go and integrate large things into one single solitary platform. Yet at the same time, it's still affordable. I do like Follow Up Boss better just because it you can text from the app and things like that. It's just a little more convenient for me. Um, it tracks everything that I need. I can customize it if I want. If I want to go smart list based, that's fine. If I want to go task based, it's fine. I think it's one of the best systems and it's very user friendly. It just really helps me never drop a ball because it's so user friendly. I don't have a one horse in the race with Follow Up Boss. Purely objective. Follow-Up Boss has been the best one that we've found. Now, I've used Follow-Up Boss. We've actually used it in our non-real estate businesses 
as well because it's so good at being able to set timers, set automatic texting and emailing. So here's what we got. For Real Estate Rockstars listeners, get a 30-day free trial. That's normally 14 days. So in order to get this, you go followupboss.com, just like it sounds, forward slash rockstars. Go there, get your 30-day free trial and check it out, especially if you aren't using any systems or any CRMs yet. This will be a great one for you to start with. Thanks again. Now back to our show. I think we were talking before the show, we were talking about investing into real estate. You know, human relationships are much more powerful even than investing in the right real estate if you pick the right people. Um, and so it's, it's finding the right picks and it's, it's figuring out who those, who those folks are for you. And the beauty is, you know, you only need a handful. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, that's my passion. That's what I, I, I write about and talk a lot, talk about a lot. Okay. So, so if someone's brand new to the business, say they're just getting, and they just got licensed in real estate, mm-hmm. how do they go find their six? What are the steps? Like, what are they, what are you going to do to find, like, what's some key points you could give them that says, look, this is what you need to do to just go start looking for your six people. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you a story and I think it'll sort of start to frame this out a little bit. Um, I give you two really quick. One was one of my earliest six that I sort of stumbled upon. I, I remember I went to breakfast with a good friend and he had, you know, gotten through all sorts of adversity himself, built an amazing firm, um, not in real estate. Um, but I, I just, I was so curious to understand what had made him as successful as he, as he had been. I remember asking him questions for about 45 minutes and he said to me, Pat, you know, you're going to do really great at real estate. And I thought, well, we haven't talked about real estate at all. We talked about <laughs> you and you know, how you, how you've built this amazing thing. And, um, and what I realized is that the questions that I asked when I sat down with people radically impacted how they saw me. And so I think so often we get in and we think networking is about trying to go pick people's brains. Yeah. You know, hey, can I pick your brain? No, you can't pick my brain. But if you bring bring me something that's really specific and authentic, um, you know, specificity helps with authenticity in a big way. Then, right. yeah, I'll talk to you. And you can you can sit down with almost anybody if you if you ask great questions and and you're teed up well. But the other thing that that he he did at the end of that conversation, he turned around and said, "Hey, listen, um, if you find any great investments, let me know." And I found him too, like within the next year. And I was super excited. He said, you know, I don't know any, anything about real estate, but you know, you clearly do. And, and I trust you. So it was amazing. But then he turned around and connected me to three other people. Wow. And I thought, man, if I could have one of these conversations every single day, game changer, total game changer. Totally. So, and, and that became my mission. It's like, I wanted to go find people that could even possibly be in the same arena as that guy. And, and, and he set the bar. So, you know, encapsulated in that is that he, he was willing to put his name to me because of the type of professional that I showed myself to be just in my curiosity. Another big takeaway, and I think young agents, new agents are worried about this is that they don't think, they think that busy people don't have time to spend with them. And here's what I realized is that I have never been asked for my advice and not been been honored by that. So it's a real gift when you ask for advice correctly. So if you're a brand new agent, you're new, look, people know you need advice. So one of the easiest ways to go get in front of a lot of people is just go ask for their advice and go find people who have habitually influential sort of uh, relationships. And so in this case, he's an attorney. He's very well respected. He's been in his industry for a very long time. Um, and that's why all three of those people took, took the, the conversation. I didn't know those people prior. So I, I increased my sphere of influence by three people, net three people just by one conversation. Yeah. And so you don't have to know everybody. You just have to know a few people and they will connect you. If you're asking the right questions and you're, and, and you're showing up to it and you're not trying to pitch them. I, that's the other that's thing. What I was I just trying say. To they pitch. Like, they're trying to sell. Like they're so busy yeah. trying to sell somebody something. They're not trying to develop an actual relationship. Right. And, and he let me know wh- what I could do for him. So I go, I went and made him some money, yeah. which was awesome. But he only trusted me to go make him some money because he saw how I was approaching the conversation. And so for brand new people, 
I mean, even if you're, you know, hey, this is a second career, you're getting into this. Right. Everybody knows that you're new in real estate and you can very authentically say, hey, you know, I, you know, in his case, look, I, I can see a disruption coming from my industry. You've weathered some amazing things. And I also admire the way in which you, you've raised your kids. I'm a dad too. Could, would you have any time for me? I'll come meet you wherever you want. And he said, absolutely, Pat, I'd love to. And, um, and you know, we met, it was a 45 minute conversation. Um, and it was a morning thing. It wasn't, we're not for a happy hour. It wasn't like, Hey, we're out for drinks really, really late. It was, it was a business conversation. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is go have business conversations during the business day. Cause it frames it correctly. You know, I, I'm not trying to be, I didn't have to be his friend. I had yeah, to be I'm not respected. trying to be your friend. Yeah. yeah. Now our friendship happened. It, of course. It, it flourished as a result of, of us having contact and, and working together and, and he's, we're still great friends. It was a um, natural byproduct of the relationship you built from the ground. Absolutely. Up. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, so that I, I wanted to, I think stories are, are a little stickier than, than just sort of telling you, but those are some principles sort of wrapped up in that. And so my question to a, a young agent is who is that person for you? You know, who, uh, write down a list of the most interesting people you know who you could go have coffee with, have breakfast with. Uh, and now on the next column over from that, write down two to three questions that you would just love to ask them. Like if you were a great podcast host and you had to show their expertise, what would you ask them? Right. And they would go, Okay, well, you know, here's the three things, right? It, you, it, it forces you to be humble enough to ask the question and curious enough. And when you show up like that, you're authentic and you're not pitching. And so people want to want to take care of you. And here's what I wanted to know when I left that conversation is how, what does this person need? How can I help them? He, he made it easy for me because he told me, here's what I need and here's the people I want. Yeah. Now, not everybody tells you that. So in the book, yeah. I spend a few chapters on how to elicit that type of response. Um, and it's not, you know, trickery. It's just, it's how you show up and how you set up the conversation. So uh, that's, that's really, that's, that's the biggest thing. And here's the other sort of systematic side to it is imagine having one of those conversations with somebody who would be a candidate for the top of your pyramid, for those six at the top of your pyramid, have one of those conversations every single day. That means you're setting up a meeting and you're having a meeting every single day. That's your job. You do that, it's game over. Now add to that one more thing, which is connect two of the people that you've met with because you're going to build a pretty big network of amazing yeah. people pretty quickly. So connect to those people every single day. When you do those three things every single day, first of all, you, you, you spend about 25 minutes in the office doing it, right? And then you spend another 45 minutes or to an hour and a half having the conversation, which is a total blast and something you'd, you'd love to do. I actually brought my son. He was shadowing me this summer. And I brought him to a bunch of these conversations with me. And, and I just asked permission. Hey, would it be all right if my son came? And they're like, yeah, sounds great. It's summer. It's a little, you know, a little more yeah. relaxed. Makes it um, even less like less of a meeting and more of a meet up. Like, hey, I'm right. building a relationship with you. Yeah. Yeah. And what was so cool is he saw, he saw a different, you know, he or she saw a different side of me. And my son got to inherit all of this wisdom. Because what is it that, that is a non-commodity? You know, get back to the, the disruption proofing side of it. Like anything that's a commodity gets cut off the bone when disruption happens, right? Yeah. That's why Blockbuster is no longer is right? <laughs> because Netflix, Netflix cut all of the fat yep. off of the bone, right? Yep. And, and that's what disruption does, regardless of the type of disruption it is. So. What is a non-commodity? Information is a total commodity right now. Google has made it so. Yeah, everybody can get it. Everybody can act knowledgeable. So knowledge is sort of a commodity as well. True. Wisdom is the only non-commodity. And True. what is it that people at the top of the pyramid exchange in order to have trust constantly? It's wisdom. 
So if you're in the wisdom distribution game, you're in the talent game, and you understand that the talent that you're looking for is in the wisdom distribution, sort of, that's their commodity that they, that they trade because they got everything they need. Yep. But the only thing that makes them more and more trustworthy, trustworthy is, is giving great advice in most cases, right? Is, is the, is the way in which they think, right? I, well, I'll tell my agents constantly that the, the reason people will work with you is not because of what you can do. It's how you think. And, and that's, that's, that's what's so unique and valuable about people at the top of their game, regardless of the industry that they're in. And those are the people you want to go find. And you want to help them get what they need. And the fastest way to do that is not you acquiring wisdom. You're a brand new agent. You're in the wisdom acquisition stage, right? right? You don't have it necessarily to give in the same way that somebody who's been, who's been doing this for 15, 30 years has, has, has. And you can be a distributor of it through other people as well. Yeah, that's so, amazing. And I think that the relationships that you build with them and the ability to actually connect them with other people in different industries that you know and like is exponential in your pyramid that you've created because now right. you're getting and you're getting you know you've got the top of the pyramid which is your your six your, your aces yeah like oh man these are my guys and then you've got mm -hmm. your next level which could be relationships that you got from the top level and it just mm -hmm. keeps going it is the ultimate pyramid scheme <laughs> it, it is in the best sense of the word right the and best sense of the word and it you sit you're level. you're central to that and you're um, driving the top number always. You're concentrating yep. on the top. It, I mean, it's it's the classic 80-20 rule. If you spend 80% mm -hmm. of your time on 20% of your relationships, wow. It, wow it's, it's, it really is. And look, so you go have a coffee a day. I mean, you know, like coffee, drink something else, it's fine. But yeah. uh, you're not spending that much money on lead gen. You know, no. you're... Uh, and and you yourself are growing massively. I don't care what anybody says. I, you know, you can read as many books as you want. The greatest wisdom I've ever gotten is from great mentors. So at the very least, you're picking up a great- Massive amounts of information. Great. Massive. You're, you're getting an MBA every year in business. Yeah. That's amazing. And and just the just the fact that this this little group of six just continues. It's not like I went door knocking and I do knocked 50 doors and I got one deal out of it. I right. took this guy to lunch and I got 50 deals out of it. Right. 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 I took this guy to lunch. I developed a deep relationship with him that lasted 20 years. And mm -hmm. over the course of 20 years, he sent me 50, 100, 200 deals. Yeah. No, that's, that's exactly it. What we do. It is literally exactly. the reverse of what everybody does. Well, when you connect that guy to someone else and they go grab a cup of coffee, who's the first, first person they talk about? Of course you. It's you. And so it's, you know, talk about sort of a, the annuitized relationship. You pick the right stock. You pick the right horse here. Now, you don't know what the right one is in, unless you show up to that game every single day. Right. And, and that's why, you know, I think in, in, because we don't do this, we're just, and we're just hungry for the next deal. We'll talk to anybody about real estate as long as they want to and, and it, and be disappointed when they don't transact with us. I don't buy a house. Dang it. Like, I just gosh, spent three hours and that guy didn't buy a house from me. I can't believe it. Right. And, and that's, um, and that's sort of the, the rat race that I think agents need to get out of and they need to start investing into deep relationships because it is actually the faster way. And it's also the, 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 the longer, the longer play here. What I found is just like trust is transferable between me and my six, right? When I'm, when we're sending deals around or we're connecting each other to great people, it's also true that when I want to fire myself from my position and, and, and bring somebody else up into a different level in my organization, I can transfer my trust from one of my six to them. I can take a major account and bring it to somebody who I trust on my team internally. Now they've got some, they've got a, a, a little book of, of business that they can keep running with. Yeah. And that's really tremendous. So people say, well, if I'm going to build a relational business, it's not, it, you can't find leverage. It's not 
you can't you can't actually scale it. And that's completely false. It's true. It's very true. Because I mean, just like if you're going to go to a restaurant and you're like, crap, I don't know where to go. And so you like put it out to your Facebook friends and you're like, hey, where should I go? I'm in this city. And so someone you know and trust says, go to this restaurant. You're going to go to that restaurant. Like that's yeah. just where you're going to go. And you're going to trust that person. It's the same thing. Like if, if you know somebody and trust somebody and they say, hey, use this person, you're fine with using that person. You'll use them every single time. Right. Right. It's, it's and it's way theirs to lose. Huh? It's and, and it's theirs to lose. As totally. Well. Totally. So I love yeah. that. That's, That's amazing. Uh, you know, and, and by the way, same the same is true for finding your mentors. You know, you're gonna find a ton of mentors, you're gonna get a tremendous education in terms of your, your business. And and right now I'm sort of talking to to newer agents, but frankly, you know, older agents, you you build a business and and you know, all of a sudden you're like, I don't have that many peers to talk to anymore. Go find your sex again. Right. And we talk about being an influencer, right? Most people these days, when you say influencer, everybody's mind immediately goes, goes to social media, right? right. There's right. someone I watch on social media and now I'm going to buy the product because they said it. But what you're doing is the ultimate original influencing. It is the, I'm going to build a relationship with this person so that they never give a real estate deal to anybody but me. I am. The, I own all the real estate space in their head. I own it. That's it. You know, and it's my, I, so I wrote this book and I brought it to, found an agent and she's like, oh, this is, you know, how to win friends and influence people, you know, for the 21st century. I was like, wow, that's really good. I, I, <laughs> I spent two years writing this book and didn't even think about it. But, uh, yeah, and I, 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 I was amazed that, you know, she would even put me in that same category, really humbled, but that really is it, you know, and we're dealing with just a different type of disruption now than people were a hundred years ago or even 50 years ago. And, you know, Stephanie, one of the things that, that I found fascinating was as an industry or really in any industry, we didn't use the term lead generation until 1976. And after that point, all of a sudden, if you watch industries like real estate, if you actually look at NAR numbers, they go through the roof in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, and 90s. Why? Because all of a sudden, we figured out how to mass produce deals. Interesting. Now, clients, and sort of like you, you look historically, you see this in the financial planning industry, right? Wolf of Wall Street comes out of this, yep. Glenn, Glary, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, all this stuff, right? All of the, all of the, the classic lead generation stuff comes out of this. And on the real estate side, stuff like sweat hogs and all this, right? Now, why have those not remained? You know, why are there no travel agents anymore? Disruption. Because Expedia, we, we got, right? Yep. Travelocity. Yep. Right, totally. So we are going to end with this. Pat, what advice would you give? Like if you could go back and redo your career starting in 2004, what would you do differently Knowing what you know now, plug yourself back into and 2004 and start over. What would you do? I guess the first, the first thing that I would tell myself is understand disruption is part of the game and your job is to be highly unique and valuable and you don't have to be unique and valuable to everyone. Your job is to create a monopoly in the minds of the highest talent people you can possibly find. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you're building a business so that you can fund the rest of your dreams. And those dreams are largely tied up in the most important people to you outside of your business. And so one of the things I'll tell my team, and, and I, I, I reference this in the book, is spend your professional time, effort, and money on the most influential people you can possibly find in your marketplace so that you can spend your personal time, effort, and money on the most vulnerable or the, the people who need you the most. For, for a lot of us, they may have the, our same last name, right? They're, they're my right. kids. They're your spouse. They're your, they're your closest friendships. Those are the people that I want to invest in in other ways. And too often we allow this business to be so controlling of our time that we forget we don't have to chase down everything if we're using our time really efficiently. And so a big part of why I wrote this book was to allow people the freedom 
to go and be talent seekers in the right way so that they can allow this business to be what it should be for the people that they love. And and let's face it. I mean, you said it at the beginning. People get into real estate because they like relationships. They're like, oh, I can do that. Like, it's all about relationships. But then they go try and build 850 million relationships one at a time. Right. Instead of going and building six really deep, really well-connected relationships that are going to give you the 850 deals you are after one relationship at a time. Yep. And then you can go take a vacation with those other people. With those other people that you actually really, 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 really care about that mean the most yeah. to you. Yes. I, that's perfect. That's great. All right. Anything else you want to end with to wrap up? Where can they find your book? If they want to read your book, where can they find that? Yeah, super easy. I mean, I'm on, I'm on, I am on Amazon. I can't talk today. And findyoursix.com has everything you need about me, about the book. It's all spelled out S-I-X, not the number. Um, and there you'll be able to find a free challenge. So I, I put together just a, a free download workbook and I call it the FY6 challenge. And you can just download that and, and you know, you don't even have to read the book in order to do the challenge. It's helpful as, as a guide. Um, and that'll take you through a six week process um, to really kick off finding your six and and gives you some of the the tools that I that that I put in the book. You can read a free chapter of the book there as well. So you can just download that as well. That's that's Perfect. there for for the taking as well. Kick the tires. If you don't like it, don't buy it. That's fine. But if you do, send it to all your friends and and, yep. and tell them about it. By the way, this is a book that's not designed just for real estate agents. So you can give this book to people um as you're doing your networking as well. Um so to give uh, to them shameless, to help grow shameless their plug, business. but yeah. you know, I didn't didn't price it too high, and um, <laughs> and then you know, uh, really, if anybody wants, I, I give free tidbits on a on a weekly basis. Six, just mindset and and tactics that people can use to get in the game of of finding this type of talent. I love it. I love it. This has been really awesome, Pat. I appreciate you coming on, and um, thank you so much, Stephanie. Thanks. All right, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Muchastegui jumping in again to thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully you guys loved listening to that one. And I wanna make sure that you know about all of the extra resources that we have. And also we need your help. They say podcasts are free. You get to listen to podcasts for free. But what is the cost of that podcast? I would say if I could beg you to pay anything for that podcast, I would say the cost of the podcast is going and giving a review. So whether you download it on Google or Apple or YouTube or anywhere else, please go give us a review. Say what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us get better guests. The more reviews, the higher we get in the rate rankings. Right now, we are the biggest podcast out there for real estate agents. And we want to keep that spot because we know there's lots of podcasts out there. So go give us a review. Also, be sure to go to hybendigital.com. If you liked any of the resources that those real estate agents talked about, we've got a huge video vault of those resources for free. Every penny that comes on the podcast that we interview, they give us something that helps them get their deals or helps them work with their clients. And we put that in the toolbox in our vault for you. So go to hybendigital.com and you can get it. If you're looking for real estate education, go to rebusuniversity.com. We have all sorts of courses in there to help agents succeed in real estate, how to get the listing, how to negotiate deals, you know, how to become an investor, all sorts of different stuff, rebusuniversity.com. And if you want to chat with me, go find me on Instagram. If you come find me on Instagram, you can send me messages. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. We try to put a bunch of content out there too. You can find me in two different places. It's at rerockstars.com for our real estate rockstars page or at erinamuchastegui.com for my personal Instagram page where I can chat with you about all sorts of different things. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.